company folder and all the company interpretations. One fifty k is the total com or is no? It... This is base compensation. I'm talking about oh. just base compensation. So talking about virtual on site now, each round will be. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is the part two of how to get job in companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple, and so on. Part one was uploaded last week. Go link in the description. Go check it out. Akil is the guest who is working right now for Google. Describes the end-to-end -end process from getting an interview call to negotiating salary and choosing the right company for your career goals. This part is purely focused on how to prepare for interviews. Not only just preparing, but how to crack the interview process, negotiating the salary with recruit. Recruiters, I highly recommend you watch the entire episode. It is filled with lots and lots of wisdom, and I hope you do find it valuable. Consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. Let me know what you guys do think about this, and what kind of topics would you want me to cover next. But now I will let you enjoy the episode. Now let's talk about preparation and how to crack the interview call. First thing is whatever you are putting in your resume, make sure you know everything about it. Uh, the second thing is there is a website Glassdoor. which is super helpful so what happens at glassdoor is if you go to any particular company wait wait let's yeah. uh, let's just, we'll just because... yeah. uh, suppose i have a amd uh, suppose nvidia interview coming up so just type nvidia mm. use this section which says interviews okay so many people have posted their interview experience at nvidia and you can see like there are the interview question clock pulse generator correct. sta concepts correct. sta concepts correct correct before appearing for any interview so it uh, doesn't matter that you are giving nvidia so you have to do only nvidia but you can do this for all the other companies amd intel qualcomm google apple right uh, and that becomes your question bank for correct exactly. preparation correct. Mm. exactly this has been my strategy since internship that i always went to glass door and i always look at the questions which interviewer is asking go through all the company pages because there are at most about 30 to 40 interviews scroll through them try to uh, discuss the interview questions with your friends around yeah. okay and apart from glassdoor there is a very famous book for verification people which is written by ramdas m and robin gov cracking digital vlsi verification interview and okay. that book is written by ramdas m and robin gov both of them are verification uh, engineers and another one tip which i'll give to everyone who is doing verification interview always discuss your interview with your friends around immediately when you interview is done because what happens is when you give answer to one particular question and when you discuss it with someone else they might have a different approach and that might help you in the next interview mm. so that's what i did during my whole internship and job hunt search that i always discuss my interviews i always noted down the questions i still have all the questions of my interviews made folder wise like i have company folder and all the company interview <laughs> questions and it helps other people as well when they are going to appear for the interview yeah maybe you can share it so i can send it to like yes, people yes, who are watching definitely. this they can oh, sure. access those yeah this is huge i like it and i like the approach of sharing it with your friend uh, yes. because what happens i've seen this a lot what happens is when you are uh, trying to interview you try to keep it to yourself because you are like i don't want to share <laughs> uh, there are some people who have this my insecurity that they don't want to share um but i like your approach that you want to share you want to help others plus you are discussing like what happened in your interview and they might be oh you could have said it this way you could have answered it this way you could have solved it that way and you get different perspective and then even if you didn't get selected you know how to solve it better in the next one correct let's talk about the uh, process like what mm -hmm. is your interview process from start to end sounds like you reach out to recruiter or you apply and then like what's the first thing happens till you get an offer okay so as far as i have seen all the interviews it basically starts with one or two screening rounds if i'm talking about full time so there will be one or two screening rounds of 45 minutes each they can be telephonic or they can be on the microsoft team or zoom so in screening round they just screen you from the top like they ask you basic definitions or basic code or basic uh, keywords in your resume and if they see that you are a fit and you know this thing then they will move to virtual on site interviews mm. now this virtual on site interviews are like 4 to 5 rounds 45 minutes each or 1 hour uh, depends upon the role and the team which is hiring but mostly they are 4 to 5 rounds of 45 minutes or 1 hour and it has to happen in a single day but if there is some time uh, conflict then they split it across two days mm. so then there are 4 to 5 rounds and uh, these rounds are separate like each round test you on different aspect of verification 
and then again it depends on team and the recruiter that how soon can they give you a decision because if there are other candidates then they will need time to assess all the options and then they will reach out to you mm, mm, okay in this screening round what happens in them okay so whatever you have written on your resume a uh, screening round is basically based on your resume so suppose if there is a computer architecture project he will ask you basic what you have done what is this mm. then uh, how did you deal with this uh, what were your learnings from this there uh, if i talk about asic verification using system by log so there are many definitions many i mean there are plenty of definitions mm. they will ask you all the definitions from a to z then there mm. is a subject rtl design asic uh, asic and fpj design using very log so that is a rtl design course they can screen you on that mm. only thing in screening happens is they cover the entire course work in that 45 minutes they mm. won't dive deep into one particular topic but they touch base upon each uh, subject which i have mentioned on your resume so that's just screening that are you capable of moving to the next round of virtual on site interviews mm. what happens on the on site interview so talking about virtual on site now each round will be specific or pertinent to one particular topic so basically when i was giving interviews my one round was for completely computer architecture two rounds were completely for verification two different people mm-hmm. 45 minutes 45 minutes another round for c++ coding so this is the thing which verification people also have to keep in mind that you are always asked c++ uh, or java or uh, based coding questions in your interview uh, the topics might vary from air arrays link list bit manipulation which becomes very important because we are dealing with digital stuff so bit manipulation mm. has to come and another round is purely very long so these are the three to four main important sub categories on which we are testing mm. yes you can apply all this strategy and get an interview call but you also need to be prepared so well that uh, all these topics when they ask you you know what they are and uh, all that some so i feel like you are so strong on your preparation as well that uh the strategy works because even your preparation is so strong that uh, even google apple you can crack it because you got all those preparation ready behind the scene correct so one thing i've learned is you can never be prepared 100% for your interview yeah yeah so there has to be a point where you are just like let's go and give an interview and understand what topics do i need to do more so after each one of my interview i tried to analyze that where i was failing or falling behind or what thing i was not able to answer and then work on that mm. so again it's a slow and gradual process like if you give one interview you will understand that okay these are the areas i need to focus appear for second interview then those areas might have been rectified but there might be new area which you need to work on like with my case if i specifically speak c++ coding basically in terms of bit manipulation that was the area which i worked a lot on because do uh, those questions when, when you say worked a lot what do you mean like practice practice bit manipulation right. questions practice on gfg or lead code gfg or lead code okay lead code, yes. uh-huh. so put a filter bit manipulation there will be 20 to 25 questions and just practice it because once they ask you in the interview then it will become a pretty much easy for you mm-hmm. but yes the first time they ask you it's i think natural <laughs> that you won't be able to answer if you are yeah. not aware and and what you are basically saying is lot of people feel this self doubt imposter syndrome that i don't think i can crack google i don't think i can crack apple i don't think that i'm good enough to get this so they have this fear going into an interview and they have this lot of self doubt but your technique which is you have to start somewhere start it practice start give an interview do the introspection and then repeat 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 that is how you will build the confidence yes. correct when i first gave my interview for microsoft and amd i got rejected so that time a little bit of doubt came into my mind mm-hmm. but at that time i uh, had a talk with myself that okay i am not get prepared with this topics with whatever they asked me mm-hmm. because i was still i just came into the us i was still uh, settling in with my academics and everything mm-hmm. but that december 2021 was the period where i uh, picked up the pace i covered all the things which were asked in interview mm. and right starting uh, from january i was able to crack the interviews which came up do you feel anybody can do it yes yes it's not a very uphill task only thing is you need to dedicate 
or time a particular time to in each individual topic let's talk about money uh, do verification engineers make money <laughs> uh, what what is the salary range for a verification engineer and let's divide the salary range for interns and also for full time okay so for internship it usually ranges between 44 dollars per hour to 56 dollars per hour oh. but yes but again it comes with a catch so i think only qualcomm and apple are the two companies which provide with housing and everything in your internship so you oh. don't yes. and apart from housing uh wifi electricity water everything is free so that's what i experienced in my internship at uh, obviously Atlanta. you had call come so yes, you had exactly. that range i mean uh, 40 to 55 Correct. which is Correct. uh for people who don't know obviously internship gets paid in hourly oh, and yes, if yes. you do the math that's roughly $8000 yes. uh, before tax um, so after tax in hand maybe you'll get 5000 6000 and he doesn't have to pay rent uh, yes. in san no diego rent, no wifi no no i was in santa clara for my acha santa San even Diego. expensive expensive, expensive, expensive than san, yes. san diego so no rent no wifi no electricity only you had to pay for grocery and food that's all and what like what was that like 500 dollars <laughs> i mean i was living with a roommate so we always split it so yeah i mean th- that becomes reasonable too right i mean yeah if you are making 5000 dollars in hand 500 dollars is nothing so um did you take loan for your masters oh uh, yes i did take loan but you- another important thing is uh we were able to save so much during our summer internship that we paid our third semester entire fees with our internship practice so mm. we just needed loan for like i just needed loan for the first two semester because i graduated in three cents and have you paid off the loan now uh, so i have just started working at google so like just two weeks ago so i'm still in the process of uh, how it. long do you think it'll take like maybe uh I think three four maybe, months uh, five months uh, yeah like max to max six months i think six months you'll be done with the loan yes. that is such an inspiration i love it what is the full time salary range for uh verification engineers it starts from 120k and then it depends upon your negotiation and everything that how far can you stretch it it can go up wow. to 140 140 i have seen people getting 150k offers uh, and 150k is the total com or is no it... this is base compensation i'm talking about oh, just base compensation okay okay what's what's the total com then um, so total compensation is made of four components definitely one is base uh, one mm-hmm. is your signing bonus Uh, one is relocation aspect, and the third one are the stocks. Mm-hmm. Now I have had few offers who weren't offering me stocks, but they were offering me refresher grant after one year. Okay. So again, it's individual choice which option do you want to go with. I personally wanted to go with the stock option, so I uh, chose the offer which were offering me stocks. Uh, signing bonus, you need to talk to your recruiter because that is negotiable. At times, I see base compensation is not negotiable, but if you have a competing offer in hand. it gets negotiated well you had seven of them yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah so that's why having multiple offer helps because if you have only one offer then you can't negotiate and you are stuck with what you have mm. but if you have multiple offers you can always negotiate and to an extent which you want mm. Mm. and the fourth component is a uh, relocation yes right so so thinking about the full time uh including total comp and uh, stock would you say 200 plus 300 to 320k it goes what <laughs> yes yes that is entry level yeah for entry level like if i talk about my total compensation it's in the range of 270 to 300k wow and and also there's a caveat that <clears throat> 275 yes the i mean assuming majority of the component in that is stock which is make mm-hmm. let's assume 100000 so he's not getting 100000 on year 1 It's probably it's less than three or four years. Three or four years, yeah. So it's only twenty five thousand of that total composition. Right. So it may be if let's assume if he's saying third three hundred thousand. So remove seventy five thousand out of it. So it's two twenty five because 225. first year will be two twenty five, which is crazy. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh wow, that is so cool. I love it. How so let's talk about negotiation. Like what did you do? Like how did you negotiate? Uh, okay, so whenever a company uh, offers you, uh, they will set up a call with HR. He will tell you about your compensation that what are the parts which they are offering. So either you can negotiate it over the call or mm. either you can negotiate it over the mail. 
So what happened with me was I always got a letter which had the numbers written on it. I prepared an Excel that what all companies were offering me how much, and then you can request for negotiation with the HR. Now mm. the negotiation happens on, like I said, it can either happen on total co- uh, base compensation, either on signing bonus. Uh, or either on stocks so mm. negotiation happening on bonus and stocks is very common because they don't usually negotiate with the base compensation mm. so try to get the negotiation as far as max as possible on both of those aspects mm. but if company is allowing negotiation on base you can definitely go for that but if you want to negotiate on base you always have to provide a competing offer letter at least mm. that's what happened in my uh, how do you know how much is your like how much to negotiate and how do you know what is the max like is there a website you look up or do you just reach out to people like what do you know, how do you know this company is offering me 50000 stock but i need 100000 like how do you ask them that so there is a website levels.fii yeah. yeah yeah so right. one thing is use levels.fii to just get a basic idea or otherwise i have talked to a lot of people on linkedin like apart from interviews as well like mm. i talk to i network to people i network with people in general talking about role and then in the end i just ask them that when you joined as a fresher what was the uh, total compensation you got at that time because mm. currently market is not very good so you can't uh, yeah expect them to pay you so much but you will get a general idea and then mm. you can negotiate up to that level so you can put up a value which you want and then they will respond from their end that how much they can offer mm. and then at some point there you need to meet on the uh, middle term yeah 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 so obviously you had seven six seven job offers uh, you decided google makes sense to me but like what were your deciding factors what what were you going through like okay i want to choose google brand money how did you decide on which offer to go for okay so after every offer which i got i had a talk with at least two members from the team like for all the companies which i had offered mm. the role which they tell about you when you are interviewing is not up to the and you don't exactly understand like what kind of work you will be doing but once you get that offer you talk to multiple people from the team and ask about their day to day activities like what are they doing you understand the role and what are the prospects in the future mm. so in google i had a talk with uh, two people my manager and one of the other uh, people whom i am working with so they explained me i'll be working with the pixel group so if you know pixel phone has a processor in house Mm-hmm. it's known as tensor so i am mm. working for the tensor processor team mm. and they mentioned about the prospects of the project uh, going into the next 3 to 4 years like what are they exactly going to work on mm. so that was uh, very motivating for me and what the work uh, i was going to do it was uh, very amazing because they were writing their test benches starting from scratch Mm. so writing test bench that's the main goal of a verification engineer you have to write a test mm. bench and writing it from scratch means you basically understand the whole test bench flow mm. there are many teams which have already written their test benches and they just need to tweak around some yeah, maintenance changes. kind of maintenance. maintenance yeah just breaking this down so first thing is reach out to the team members Correct. to understand uh, you don't need to reach out you can just ask hr that i want to have a conversation with uh, people from the team so he or she can arrange a call with them for 45 wow. minutes wow so i have done this with all the offers which i got even during my internship i did the same thing always talk to the team members who are on the team after you got the offer after you, you, got the you offer. told recruiter hey yes. i want to talk to team member to understand yes. my role better yes. and they were like okay with it they weren't like uh... I, no hr has as of now said no to this he has all <laughs> all always arrange a call or two with the members and, and that conversation is obviously not interview it's more like you asking them uh, like what will be my roles what will be my duties and responsibilities and what am i expected uh, to work in this role? and what's and your what career, are his career growth as Correct. well exactly. Career okay okay And, and and so you compared that obviously yes. you compared money and uh, you reached out to alumni to understand which culture is better company culture and then you chose whichever mm-hmm. best aligns with your yes. career goals yes that's awesome cool what's the one advice would you give to job seekers so first one is always have a linkedin premium i have still seen people who are not having linkedin premium the flexibility which you get with linkedin premium is amazing mm. uh second thing is re- start reaching out to people on linkedin who are hiring or even those who are not hiring start reaching out to managers senior managers principals leads directors drop them a message you might get a response you might not get a response keep your heads high other thing is 
be very strong on your resume whatever you have written start revising it because when interview comes don't think that once interview has come then i'll start preparing always keep your preparation in handy mm. do lead code and gfg daily for the questions which are asked in verification like which i mentioned arrays mm. strings bit manipulation and uh, link list so these are the four basic right category of questions which are asked in the interviews and hope for the best yeah thank you again i can't wait to do this again i'm planning to come to san diego so hopefully Yes, yes. Meet in person. Um, I can get a Google tour. Uh, sure, sure. Know. Definitely, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Until our next one. Keep okay. smiling. Keep laughing. Nice. <laughs>